uh, first question is, what's the difference between an SBC and a SIP proxy? Um, we found it, uh, I suppose you remember, Alan, very interesting when we went to Astrakhan, um, where we met a lot of people who were um, using a SIP proxy. Mm -hmm. And um, they were, some of them were thinking of using an SBC and they were asking questions. Well, I have a SIP proxy. Why would I use an SBC? So um, this is one of the top frequently asked questions. So can you tell us about it? Yeah, no, it was. It was a very popular question. Uh, well, Red Astra kind of continues to be even after that. So uh, it, the first thing is understand a little bit about the difference between, you know, between a proxy and a, and a SBC is just an, a big architectural difference. And we actually covered this in a webinar uh, a couple of months ago, uh, comparing SIP servers and SIP proxies against session border controllers. Uh, and what was shown here is uh, the block diagram for a SIP proxy or a server. And the two names are sometimes used inter, you know, the intermixed. Uh, but nonetheless, the architecture is basically the same, which is uh, the SIP proxy and server only works on the SIP messages. And if you're familiar with SIP a little bit, you know that SIP really consists of two pieces, which is the SIP call control. And the other thing is the media that's done out of band in a uh, different uh, stream, usually an RTP stream that's done on UDP. So a SIP proxy and SIP servers uh, almost universally have two core elements. One of them is the header manipulation and the second thing is a routing engine where it can then uh, forward that. And they use the header manipulation to fix messages or make modifications to the messages and then a routing engine to forward them off to the applications. But the key thing is, is that the media never goes through the proxy or the server. It goes directly to the endpoints, um, as shown in this uh, diagram here. Uh, a SIP session border controller has a somewhat similar but different architecture in the sense that uh, it includes something called a back-to-back -back user agent, which is often shortened to B2B UA. And this is where the SIP sessions come in. Uh, are terminated using a user agent server. Uh, and then you, the logic is applied to whatever modifications are necessary. And then a user agent client initiates a fresh new session. Uh, and the media comes into the session border controller, goes through the media engine and then out to the applications. And the key difference is you'll notice here uh, is that the you know, media go, goes through the session border controller uh, and uh, that gives complete isolation of the IP addresses in on the right hand side here of one of the networks versus the other. And this um, gives total and complete topology hiding, which we'll talk about in just a few slides and a, a coming question. So hopefully that answers the difference between the two. Um, sort of a related question that pops up once in a while is the, how does this affect scaling and some of those other things. Well, certainly dealing with the media or passing the media uh, is a little bit more work, uh, but um, the, uh, um, uh, the, you know, the, the density of the software, the efficiency of the software usually makes up for, uh, or the value of having the topology hiding makes up for um, the cost of uh, extra work on the uh, session border controller. So, yeah, that's that's right. And, uh, um, you know, the, some uh, customers uh, simply use a firewall, other use a, a SIP proxy or and others use an SBC and there are major uh, differences um, right. be between right. them. Um, uh, we go on to the next question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just uh, wanted to just show this real comparison summary. We showed this in the uh, webinar real quick. Um, and I'd actually refer people back to the recorded webinar in our video library, uh, where we compare these uh, between firewalls, SIP servers, and session border controllers, and uh, you know the functions that they provide between the three of those. And, and so I'd uh, definitely recommend that. So now we're ready to move on to the next question. Thanks for listening. I hope you found this content useful. And don't forget to share this with any other your coworkers or others who might be interested. Also, don't forget to click on subscribe and there's links below.